Today, we're about to throw away one of the greatest myths in the stock market, the stop loss. We are being told to always use a stop loss, but the truth is that a stop loss in most cases makes a strategy perform worse. Yes, you heard it right. Despite all the hype around the stop loss, back tests reveal that it's not a good idea to have one. In this video, we're going to show you why we don't use a stop loss in our strategies. Instead, we'll explain you alternatives to a stop loss, and we'll show you via back tests how you can both increase returns and lower drawdowns and risk without using a stop loss. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn how you can improve your trading game. Before we start, we remind you that you find our best strategies on our webpage. We share tips and tricks for both trading and investing. Let's get back to the implications of using a stop loss. As we all know, trading is all about making money and managing risk. But finding the right balance between the two can be a tricky business. Too much risk and you might fail. Too little risk and you'll not make money. But that's not all. Your performance as a trader is also heavily dependent on avoiding behavioral mistakes such as selling into a panic or folding after a drawdown. The reason for a stop loss is that you want to minimize your risk or at least control risk by having a specific limit on what you want to lose on a single trade or position. This makes a lot of sense in theory, but does it work that way? Unfortunately, the answer is a lot more complicated and it also varies for different trading approaches and systems, especially if you are trading mean reversion systems. The problem is almost all strategies are based on anecdotal evidence and are not proven. You need to backtest to prove a strategy. And most backtests reveal that a stop loss makes the strategy worse. So what's the solution? Is there an alternative to the stop loss that can help us manage risk without hurting profitability? How do we mitigate risk without relying on the traditional stop loss method? The answer is yes. And in this video, we'll show you exactly how to do it. We'll explore the concept of risk management and dive into finding alternatives to the stop loss method. Let's look at a strategy with and without a stop loss. The two charts belong to the exact same strategy. The upper pane is the equity curve logarithmic scale and the lower pane shows the drawdowns, the max loss from a recent peak in the equity. This is a strategy that we trade ourselves and is back tested on the ETF with the ticker code SPY which tracks S&P 500. The difference between the two equity curves is that the one on the left has no stop loss while the one on the right uses a stop loss based on the ATR indicator. The strategy is based on mean reversion. As you can see on the right chart, a stop loss reduces performance. Annual returns goes down from to 12.5% to 10.5%. Naturally, to lower risk, a reduction in returns might be expected, which is acceptable. Therefore, it's crucial to not solely focus on the rate of return, but also consider the rate of return in conjunction with the associated risk. Assessing our risk as the maximum drawdown can be useful in this regard. But in our example, the stop loss doesn't reduce drawdowns. Max drawdown actually increases from 22 to 23 percent. Even if we implement huge wiggle room for the stop, we don't reduce the drawdown. In this case, a stop loss both increases risk and lowers performance. Of course, it's not always like this, but more likely than not, whatever type of strategy you are trading. Why is it so? Let's show you an example. The green arrow shows a buy signal from our strategy and we buy after a pretty steep fall in SPY. But unfortunately, the market keeps falling after we buy and the stop loss liquidates our position to limit further losses on the exact bottom. We lose almost 6% on the trade only to see SPY rally the next days. That's what we call a bummer. Only a few of those trades make the strategy a lot worse because we lose the compounding effect. Luckily, there are alternatives to the stop loss. For example, you can trade many asset classes like gold, bonds, commodities, and stocks. This can help spread your risk and reduce your exposure to any one particular asset class. You can also trade uncorrelated strategies. This means that your strategies should not be highly correlated with each other. By doing so, you can reduce your overall portfolio risk. You are looking for strategies that complement each other. This means that your strategies should work well together in different market conditions and not have overlapping trades. Another way to manage risk is by trading different time frames. By doing so, you can reduce your exposure to any one particular time frame. Time exits can be very useful. This means that you can exit your trades after a certain amount of time has passed, regardless of the price movement. Most trading edges lose power as time goes by. Varying your position sizes can also help manage your risk. By doing so, you can reduce your exposure to any one particular trade. Lastly, you can trade lower size than you'd like. This means that you can reduce the size of your trades, which can help reduce your overall portfolio risk. This way, you reduce the risk of making behavioral mistakes and you detach from money. These are just some of the alternatives to a stop loss that you can use to manage your risk effectively. 
and there are probably others we have not thought about. Let's look at how you can both increase returns and reduce drawdowns without using a stop loss. We have the following equity curve on a back-tested strategy on SPY. The strategy is good and a 100,000 investment in 2003 grows to over a million by today. The trading statistics of the strategy is promising. We are invested just 30% of the time and still we beat buy and hold nicely with 12.5% annual returns. Almost 3 percentage points more than buy and hold. Also drawdowns are much lower at 22 versus buy and holds 55%. But can we control risk and at the same time retain the return potential or ideally increase it? Let's have a look. Let's add three new strategies. So we have four strategies in total. The strategies we added trade the following ETFs and markets, QQQ, XLU, and TLT. The results improve a lot. Look at the difference of these equity curves. Not only do you make a lot more money, but you also lower drawdowns and losses as illustrated in the lower panes. This is precisely why you want to add asset classes and different trading systems. It works. During the 20-year period, you double your capital by adding the three strategies and you experience less drawdowns and losses as well. Diversification is the only free lunch in the financial markets. Let's look at the statistics when we add the three strategies. Annual returns increases to 16.5% while we are invested just 4% percentage points more than the single strategy, 30 versus 34%. But the best part is that on average, we experience smaller drawdowns and thus are less likely to commit behavioral mistakes. We smooth our returns by adding strategies. Before we finish, let's show you the annual returns of the combined strategies. Only one losing year with a modest loss of 2.5% in 2018. Please pay attention to the performance in 2008 and 2022 when stock markets dropped massively, 36.3 and 15.1%. We didn't reveal the strategies because it's part of our own trading arsenal and we don't want to give it away for free. We have worked hard for these strategies and they are the result of more than 20 years full-time trading and investing. We stop here for today and hope you like and subscribe and visit our website to find hundreds of other strategies for many other asset classes. Good luck trading!